The El Dorado County CELPAs have created this web module to assist data stewards in using the CALPAD 1621 Accountability and Monitoring Report. We will review how to access and read the 1621 report, as well as resolve common errors. The purpose of the 1621 report is to identify students in two meeting timeliness categories, compliant or non-compliant. This aligns with the requirements to review a student's IEP at least once annually and reevaluate a student's eligibility at least once every three years. Students appear in the 1621 reports if they are enrolled in your LEA as of the report date and they have a student with disability status of eligible and participating. Before generating the 1621 report, the best practice is to review SACE to ensure all reportable data has been submitted. This will expedite your review of the data included in the report. SELPA also recommends identifying the late meetings on your SACE dashboard to compare with the 1621 overdue records and follow up with the case managers on unaffirmed meetings. Until a meeting is affirmed and reported, CalPADS will not recognize that it has been held. This is the list of the recommended CalPADS permissions for data stewards. Please confirm that you have these permissions with your LEA's CalPADS administrator before trying to generate the report. To generate the 1621 report, open the Reports drop-down box on the left margin of the navigation pane. Select Accountability Monitoring Reports. On the next page, select the 1621 report. Best practice is to generate this report every two weeks and after all enrollment updates. The as of day will auto-populate with the current date when creating the report. Click the View Report button in the upper right to generate the report. You can view the report through CalPADS or choose to download the report into another application such as a CSV file for better filtering options. When viewing this way, all students enrolled at your LEA will appear in this report regardless of their monitoring category. The monitoring category will indicate the timeliness status of the last reported meeting. Meetings are overdue, not held, late, with or without a delay code, or timely. Students whose last meeting was late will appear as late until the next timely meeting is reported. Additional columns to the right of the Monitoring Category column offer supporting information used to determine the monitoring category. Pay close attention to the days that have elapsed since late and the use of meeting delay codes. The best practice is to address those with the highest numbers of days elapsed since late first. These records most often have clerical errors. The evaluation type and plan review indicator identify the meeting type of the last reported record. Non-compliant meetings are reported in your LEA's annual determination letter. Instead of viewing all student records, you can filter the 1621 report to display only those currently identified as non-compliant. To filter, select Yes and deselect No in the non-compliant drop-down box before clicking the View Report button. SACE transactions include four possible file types. SACE activity determines which file types are created and included in the reportable transaction. When viewing the transaction in SACE, the file types included are identified in the Files Created box. Meet files determine monitoring categories and compliance. To begin your review, open the CalPAD Special Education Meeting Container. The most recent reported meet file will appear on the top of the list. SWDS files determine eligibility. Students appearing in the 1621 have an eligible and participating status. Often, SACE indicates a student exit that does not appear in CalPADS. Meetings may be misidentified as non-compliant if they have incorrect or missing meeting delay codes. Allowable delay codes by meeting type can be found in the CalPADS valid code combos. Delay codes must be documented in the comments or notes in the student's IEP. Delay codes are to be used when any meeting exceeds the compliance timelines. 
Pending transactions can be submitted with delay codes to report late meetings before meetings are held. Delay codes are populated on the CalPAD student page prior to affirming the meeting or creating the pending transaction. If the wrong SELPA or LEA is listed on the student record, you must submit an adoption transaction of the most recent IEP plan file. Clerical errors in SACE may result in overdue or late meetings. Examine the Information Eligibility page on the IEP for clerical errors for meeting dates and next meeting dates. The Meeting Notes page can also determine what meeting type should have been affirmed. Current IEPs affirmed yes for initial CalPADS affirm will not have the meet file created. CalPADS enrollment exits using code E155 or E156 closes the prior year's enrollment record but also pre-enrolls the student for the next academic year. If the student does not return to your LEA, your CalPADS administrator must change the enrollment exit code. To identify students who remain pre-enrolled with no current enrollment record in your LEA, your CalPADS administrator can run the Exit Reason Discrepancies Anomalies Management Report. The E155 exit code must be updated to remove the student from the 1621 report. Other data in the 1621 report is directly tied to the state performance plan indicators. Least restrictive environment should be reviewed for the correct program setting. 400 or 500 are most common settings for students age 5 to 22. General education participation is the reported percentage of time the student is included in general education. Parental involvement facilitation is the parental response taken from the IEP signature page. An amendment to the current IEP should be created for these corrections. The 1621 can also be used for proactive monitoring of upcoming meetings. As the days elapsed since meeting approaches the compliance timelines, you can view your SACE meetings alerts to verify that a meeting has been scheduled. Degree of support is not required on student records until the 25-26 academic year, but you should begin to update during this academic year as IEP events occur. If the primary disability does not require the degree of support to be reported, please select Not Applicable from the drop-down box. The El Dorado County SELPAs have created various how-to videos to assist users in completing SACE-specific tasks and CalPADS reporting. All videos are divided into playlists by SACE permissions, including a data compliance playlist for CalPADS reports. Please bookmark this site for future reference. The California Department of Education has created many resources for special education, including additional information on the 1621 Accountability Monitoring Report. We hope this web module provides the foundation for utilizing this report. If you have any questions or need additional assistance with data reporting or report review, please contact our SELPA data team.